All right, we're here on Zoom with Roxana. Is it, do I say it right? Roxana, right? That's right. You are Persian, right? You told me. That's right correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to go to a Roxana. I used to go to school with a Roxana. She was Persian as well, but then there was another one and she was Russian. And to me, like, it's so funny how names can be so international, but sometimes we think they belong to just one nation. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Um, I always get excited when I see another Roxana. I'm like, it's like meeting a celebrity kind of to me. It's like, because you know, you don't know it. There's, it's a common name, but it's not a common name at the same time. So it's yeah, like your own face. It's more like, Roxanne in, 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 in America, I suppose, right? Yeah, I get that a lot. And when I throw the A on there, they're like, oh, you know, like, are you from here? And I'm like, yeah, I really am. <laughs> yeah, I want to be stylish. Anyways, how are you? Good morning to you. It's afternoon over here, but it's morning over there. You're supposed to be working, right? I, I am. <laughs> uh, but I, I stepped away from the cloud today, so that way I could hang out with you guys. So I appreciate you having me on the show. <gasps> yeah, I appreciate you hanging out with us and just like, you know, delaying work for a little bit. <laughs> I'm sitting here so funny. This dress is just like, all right. So tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? I mean, I already said that you're Persian. <laughs> so and I am. Live, oh, go ahead. Yeah. You live where? Huh. I mean, I do know, but they don't know. <laughs> right, exactly. So I am Roxana Guy. I am that guy from Kentucky. And most people are usually like, because when they hear the United States, they automatically go to the big cities. So they're like, what's Kentucky? Like, where is that? So it's a more rural part. But for those who are- in Everybody should know it because of Kentucky Fried Chicken, no? <laughs> right. That's also true, too. I get that a lot, too. They want to know if my grandmother has fixed that like that. I'm going to oh say hers gosh. is better. Yeah, I know. It's just a funny thing again. I'm just saying. But I always say my grandmother's just so much better. So so anyways. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's very chicken, exactly that. Like <laughs> Yeah. So uh, for those in the world who are kind of, you know, still a lot of loss, if you ever heard of Nashville in the music and entertainment industry, I am just outside of the Nashville area. Uh, we, we jokingly call it Nash Vegas for the, all the lights. But anyways, uh, back to myself, I am a writer and blogger uh, for a website called Just Add That. And most people are like, what is that all about? Um, it's literally about somebody who is going from the beginning of I don't know how to start a business or start my own blog or writing and I'm literally giving you baby steps on how to uh, go through the process and actually start your own business. Fabulous absolutely great we will touch on that in a little while before that I just want to say you're from Nashville and you told me so many interesting things about Nashville like I didn't know uh, for me like I'm so like this is so typical we all don't want to be so you know like going with the cliches and then in the, at the end of the day, we still do. So for me, Nashville was country music. That's all it is. Of course, I know there is obviously some people who do not like country music, but it was <laughs> all in all like country. Now you're telling me they have like an eclectic area there, which was super interesting to me. And he said they have Moroccans and I never thought Moroccans would be in Nashville. <laughs> I never saw that color. Like, and then again, I thought, okay, my people, they go everywhere. They just want to be everywhere. Yes. So Broadway is a great place. We call that the, the Nashville Strip, but Broadway's the main street through uh, the middle part of downtown Nashville. And so mm -hmm. what's really interesting is you can just walk down this strip and there's like literally a whole like square, like going down second and around church and commerce there. You can walk and you will literally hear every kind of music out there. So you can hear, you know, your country, you know, bar kind of scene that you're looking for, your honky tonk. Uh, across the street oh, might be a metal band that's rocking out. Um, uh, you might go down the road a little bit more and then you've got some street performers that are doing some avant-garde drumming um so you can go down a little bit more and you'll have bluegrass that's going on there's this awesome lady who comes out usually around christmas time her and her grandson uh have a band that they play like the spoons and they have the washboard it's so cool and um there is jazzy type music some people who if you've ever been to new orleans um they said, you know, Bourbon Street's a lot like that same kind of feel. Oh, wow. Everybody automatically feels like it's jazz, you know, because it's like the heartland of jazz. But so it's never boring in Nashville. Right. Never. Nope. You want, if, if it's music, it's there. Okay. Well, uh, I will be looking for the hip hop and R&B and everything. What, are you, what music are you into? Oh, that's a great question. I, I jokingly tell everybody I'm eclectic. Um, I do have uh, mm -hmm. a lot of like hip hop, R and B kind of background. A lot Good. of people are usually shocked by that. I do like a little Why? country. Why? Uh, it's because again, my twang. A lot of people automatically assume 
uh, that I like country because I have a country twang. And when they hear okay, that, this is like, a big prejudice though. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, um, it, it's, it's kind of funny. And so when I start talking about, you know, and I like metal and, uh, when I talk about metal, I like kind of like the eighties hair band kind of thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, poison. <laughs> just kidding. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, like I just like a little bit of everything. Music speaks in so many different ways to different people. So it's a really, totally. yeah. Totally. That's why I always say music, sports, and food connects people. These three things mm -hmm. will forever connect people. Y'all don't even have to talk. You don't even have to speak the same language, but you will understand each other just because people need to eat, people need to be entertained, and people, and sometimes people, well, I guess sports is entertainment too, in a way. I, I can see that. Yeah. 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 So, okay. And now I want to get to the part which I found very interesting. So your day job is also very interesting as well. You want to tell us what it is? So I actually work for Google. Most people are like, what? Like I really do. I work on the cloud platform. Um, I work specifically for the G Suite division, even though I can work with various different parts of the cloud. Um, but um, I am a member of the contact sales team. So if you guys have questions and a lot of people are like, what is G Suite? Um, it is a collaboration tool. Uh, basically, it's to keep you guys organized, um, whether it's, you know, like the one on one business I was talking about with blogging, or if you're, you know, have a full like CRM where you need to have like your team and your corporation involved. It's a really awesome tool to keep you, you know, organized and on task. Exactly. So you, if you have a business out there and you have a team already and you need that kind of tool, then you know where to find it. Um, so, and, and how you got the job is obviously a little bit also very interesting <laughs> and unconventional as well, because you had nothing to do with IT. Your background isn't something else. Actually. Nope. Actually, I have a degree in social studies, uh, social sciences. And so um, I have been working, uh, going back to the music industry in Nashville for the last few years as an Uber driver. And I had a client that was talking to me about a job and it was just amazing, <laughs> like talking to this person. And so again, you don't think about having you know a google rep or anything he's like i really think you would be really you know interesting and go into this you know hire event we're gonna have i had no idea what the company was had no idea what i was doing i dropped him off i went to a local target grabbed a business suit and went for like i said i didn't know exactly what a hire event was i thought it was like a job fair you just kind of got to meet you know other corporations yeah, and kind of get to yeah. know people so long story short um it was almost like speed dating it was really kind of weird um this guy comes out and he's like you know are you Roxanne a guy and I said um yeah and so we go and we sit at this table again with our fancy little cone on there and um you know he says do you have a resume and I said um no because I wasn't thinking like that like I said I was so spur of the moment and yeah. so um you know, he kind of rolled his eyes. He was very polite, but he kind of rolled his eyes like, okay, fine, it's another one of these people. And the more we <laughs> talked, I started talking to him about, you know, my my blog and my website and my book I had written. He started taking notes and he was like, this is really interesting. He's like, I have a friend that I really think you need to talk to like ASAP and um, hold on one second. My Alexa's going off. Go figure. Anyway, oh, this so, is your Alexa. I was like, hold on. My Alexa is not set yet. Like my Alexa went off. I'm so sorry about that. So, oh, cool. uh, yeah. So going back, he, <laughs> you know, said, I really want you to talk to this, this friend of mine. So I said, okay, great. So I start talking a week later with, get this phone call. He's like, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm with the, the Google cloud platform, um, an alphabet subsidiary. Can you know, how are you doing today? And I said, uh, I'm sorry what did you say? <laughs> and he was like, I'm with Google. Like, are you expecting, you know, my call? Cause I, I have you as an appointment today for a call for an interview. And I said, uh, yes, I just didn't expect it to be, you know, with Google. Google yeah. And so the next thing I knew we had a 45 minute conversation just as, you know, natural, like you and I are having. And he said, uh, you know, I really like you. I like your tenacity. Uh, I want you to start, you know, next week. Can we do that? And I've been with the Google cloud ever since so it was it was crazy yeah very crazy but i want to go back to the party was an uber driver that was like was was this like to make more money was that like your side hustle job kind of thing or was it more um something because you, you you couldn't find a job at that time like 
it was a side gig. Um, it was never supposed to be, you're going to laugh when I tell you this. When I started it back in 2017, I started in November 2017, I just needed some extra money to pay my water bill. And um, mm-hmm. I didn't expect it to be as much fun as it was. Um, a lot of people, you know, go in and they go in with the mindset, like this is, you know, my way of being my own boss. Um, I kind of don't think that's the best approach to go with Uber myself. Um, however, uh, well, the reason why is because it is such, it's a market that isn't dependable. Um, you can have people come in and come out all the time and you always hear all the horror stories. I personally had over 6,000 passengers and I only had four not so fabulous people in my car, but we won't get into that story. (laughs) So, uh, but long story short, it, it, there were some days where I made so much that if I didn't want to work, I was good for the rest of the month. And there were other times that, you know, I could barely like rub two pennies together to make ends meet, you know? So, so you definitely always, if you do decide to do it full time, you always, always, always have to plan ahead. So that way you have some kind of savings to fall back on. Yes, I, I, I believe that. And I, I agree with you. And I, I just thought it was important to throw out there as well. Mm-hmm. I wanted to explain it. Yeah, absolutely. But, so you had 6,000 passengers, which sounds like it was driving forever. <laughs> and you had four horror, horror stories. Just give me like a brief a brief summary of it. Yeah. Like, okay. They're, the they're really funny. They're not like the scary, like everybody, oh, the first question everybody always asks you, like, have you ever been held at gunpoint or has anybody ever found oh, wow. it in your okay. car? No, 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 no. We haven't had anything like that. Like I had one guy who freaked out because he didn't realize that women drivers were a thing. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I wanted to like, get to that point anyway. So yeah. Like, that kind like, of stuff. Like you're, you're kind of like, what kind of rock have you been living under guy you know like are you okay and he was like that was so scary and I was like because I was a woman he was like yes and I was like okay have a nice life (laughs) yeah but how was it really driving as a woman like you might have gotten them looks maybe some guys was trying to actually move to you and trying to you know get that number or something Oh, I've had guys who, uh, I have a few that have asked me to Netflix and chill. And I'm like, no, I'm good. They're like, are, are they're like, your husband won't find out. And I'm like, uh, they probably will. I have a moral, you know, have, I have priorities. Oh and again, you, you have to just take it as a grain of salt because these guys are, you know, typically drunk. They do not really know what they're saying. And so you was uh, never, so you was never scared. No, 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 absolutely not. Actually, mm-hmm. I have a funny story that I was scared at that turned out to be hilarious. Okay. Um, okay, so it was right around Halloween for uh, those who don't know. That's like a, just a time where we celebrate and do pranks and trick or treat and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I got a call. It was late one night and the GPS actually failed me. It took me to an abandoned trailer park and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like on the late night news as somebody. <laughs> and oh, this guy was <laughs> this dude is like holding up his phone and he's like I have a purple light and I said I'm just gonna be honest with you I'm not picking anybody up in a trailer park especially one that's abandoned and with your purple light I'll probably run you over if you get in front of me so stay out of my way and he oh was like I, yeah I know and he's like I don't know what you're talking about I'm so sorry because I haven't done anything I've been at work all day I am starving and I just want to go to the restaurant and get some food <laughs> Come to find out, I was in the wrong area. I was it was the next street over. Had nothing to do. Oh, with and he yeah, but like, ain't it crazy? What because it's just like the next street, you know. And we always say like you can be in the most ghettoest area, and then you just go one street further, and the area changes. The atmosphere yeah. changes. The energy. The houses. Everything. I mean, these houses were. Yeah like Hollywood stars would have been proud to have these kind of homes See? You know what I'm saying? and to, ha- to know that he has a- an abandoned trailer park living in his backyard I would be upset as a neighbor I'm just being honest here <laughs> but he was the most delightful person and I would have missed out on that opportunity if I hadn't called him and said you know all right this is how it is it's, that is true that is true so and, and the funny thing is with your going back to your Google j- job again, um, you work from home even pre-pandemic, right? That's right. Um, so it was kind of a crazy amazing. thing. Yeah, we started in the office because they want us to kind of get to know the team. Um, of course. We, we had a very, very crazy training 
time and that's why we ended up staying like fully remote we trained for two weeks in the office there was this massive tornado that happens day two of my orientation in oh, Nashville wow. yeah and it wasn't just any tornado it was like one that took out like east side of Nashville like we're gonna have to rebuild for like a couple of years kind of tornado and so we were like well this is going to be an interesting job I, I mean you, you get the wrong kind of impression and so the more I figured out that this wasn't like this at all like it's really a team oriented um they have this kind of saying your success is our success um so you you can literally make your career what it is like if you feel like staying with google and making a career out of it it is your job to make a career out of it if uh you decide hey i want to go work for this other company or this other competitor because i get paid for google is like we're not going to hold you back because you know this is your life so you know being you know remote through the pandemic through everything it was like really a godsend um you know to have this awesome team that wants to build with you and wants to grow with you it's just I can't describe it as a job (laughs) yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean and this is you know not not everybody is blessed to have that kind of job where you really feel like I actually I actually love getting up in the morning because I love going to work well working in your case you're not going to work you're home but yeah well, and um, let's switch gears one more time because I want to get in as much as possible. You wrote a book. I did. Talk I about wrote, it. <laughs> so I wrote a book and it wasn't like I was out of the, you know, out of the gate going to say, hey, I'm going to write a book. So I had this cool job back in the past. Um, it's going to sound like a job hop a lot, but I really haven't. Um, so I worked for a school mm-hmm. district. And I had this amazing friend that I made who was in special education and Mm -hmm. she had been so invested in her job that um, she ended up adopting one of her students. He had been severely neglected, long story short. Um, He had a lot of needs and she knew not everybody would be able to sustain those. She didn't have children of her own. And so she takes this kid on full time um, and she's like the most organized person I've ever met in my life. I mean, I think we would be happy to have a fraction of her time management skills, really, honestly. But she is so dedicated to her job and to this particular child of hers now. Um, You know, she's got a calendar that has all of his therapy sessions, doctor's appointments, anything that this kid needs. She has another one that's all about her school kids, all about her work. You know, she tries to keep those things separate, but, you know, balanced. And then she has a third one that kind of, you know, sometimes things kind of fit in the gray area, like her kind of me time, her personal time, you know, those things tend to get neglected, especially when we're taking care of somebody else. And I thought, oh my goodness, I need to write about this. So I go in and I dive more into writing a book. And that's what I wanted to do is the value of time, uh, time management for a more productive day. And I took the lessons that I learned from her, some stuff that I had researched on my own. And I wanted to, you know, make this something that was easy to read and accessible to people. Well, this is a great project because I feel like this is what we all struggle with the most time management. And then we all have our discipline issues. And I think this goes hand in hand with time management as well, because when you have a plan and you want to stick to the plan and then it's so happen that sometimes you're too lazy, you're too caught up with other things, you know, you don't stick to it, then things, you know, get crazy. So what is the biggest lesson that you can tell us now or that we can take from the book? Absolutely. So this goes along with my current job as well. Like there's a saying that we do not uh, work from home, we live at work. So there's so many different things with trying to balance time. What we do, we tend to neglect ourselves. You know, we put our families first, we put our business first, uh, we just, you know, take away so much. So this book is about finding balance and understanding that your most valuable asset is time. You know, everybody's always chasing that dollar and Mm -hmm. the dollar or your your money is only going to go so far in life. You can always get another job you can always find another way to make ends meet but your time you will never get back once it's spent it's done so that is very very true it's definitely a very good lesson as well i would definitely you want to tell us the name of the book oh absolutely so it's the value of time uh Mm -hmm. it is um time management for a more productive day is a little subheading on it Um, it is available on amazon as well as on barnesandnoble.com as well Perfect, perfect, perfect. And that is, is is that when like writing a book, was that when you discovered your passion for like writing in general when that's why you started the blog? 
absolutely. So the blog, you're going to laugh. Uh, I actually started out because I like couponing as well. And I thought, oh, I'm going to write a blog about couponing. And I realized I absolutely hate writing about couponing. I like to do it, but I hate <laughs> writing about it. It's horrible. It's awful. And so, um, you know, I started getting more people who were like, I just don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know how to do this. You know how to do, you know how to set up a web page. You know how to use WordPress. You know how to do this. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I don't know how to do a YouTube channel. And so the idea was, you know, I'm, you really need a place where you can just find like, how do I do this? How do I figure this out? What is a mail merge? I don't know what this is. So that's where the blog kind of, you know, developed. And then the time management is, you know, you put all this time into your blog. Suddenly, you know, you realize, hey, you know, where am I in all of this? Because I have become the business. I don't know where my family is or my balance. So time management became, you know, writing became my passion because, um, you know, you just want to help other people who are struggling because you know you're not the only person that's dealing with that. Absolutely. And you know, I've talked before, like sometimes uh, women, you know, we're our own worst enemies kind of thing when we really should be the ones that are rallying together. Unfortunately, yes. Women do have a problem. I don't know. This is like, there is a lot going on, especially Mm -hmm. when it comes to business, especially when it comes to certain situations in life, women... I don't know. I wish it would be different, I think, but we all should work on that. I mean, it it all leads back to insecurities. And I feel like because we've been always put against each other, you know, like it's always the only, and and, and I always say that it's it's always the first and only female rapper. There can be only one female rapper. There can be only the first female that did this or only one female that's the CEO or whatever. You know, and I think like it's been planted in our heads and that's why women are so catty because they want to achieve. Mm-hmm. And they want to achieve that position that only that one woman can have, as they say. Absolutely. And I, I'm here to tell you right now, like where I'm at is because of great women and listeners like you. And I realize that this audience could be more than that. Guys, yeah. if you're listening as well, you guys are uh, appreciated as well. I'm a egalitarian <laughs> as far as that goes. Uh, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody who is a success honestly has a whole pyramid of people behind them. Let's be honest here. Uh, you know, you didn't just get up to the top on your own because you woke up one day and was fabulous you woke up and you worked your butt off you had team members that helped you and build you and the more that we contribute and we build into the communities and with people the better and more successful you're going to be absolutely and I agree with that and that's why for me like I mean you can tell so many success stories you can talk all about them you can ask how did you do this you can ask the biggest billionaires how did you achieve this and how did you do that you know and they will tell you that story of how they had nothing of how they worked so hard but a lot of them forget to conveniently mention that it's a teamwork Mm-hmm. absolutely and you know you always hear that the the i there's no i in team and then everybody when they hit that success point it's all about i i i so yeah. you know what i mean but yeah it, it does I, and that's one thing i really appreciate about my google family is that we go above and beyond the team first and you know what's even better that i never had this before with a job if you know we have a, a i have one of my sons i have two sons um i have if i have one of my sons that are sick um you know they're like like, go take care of your kids. Like, we get it. And yeah. uh, my oldest son has autism. So, again, that adds some mm. different things. And a lot of people, like, label. Like, when they hear autism, they automatically, like, oh, your son's broken. Like, no. It just his, has a different way of perceiving the world, you know, thinking and, you know, interacting. And sometimes mm. when he gets overwhelmed. He does. It's like his whole world came crashing down. And he is, you know, sobbing. He's frustrated. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, you know, everybody hates me, even though that's not the case at all. And yeah. so you yeah. have to stop what you're doing. And that's what I love about having a team that's like, we get that. And, you know, don't neglect your work, but at the same time, be there for your family. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree with you because I mean, I mean, it's like, th- this is what a lot of bosses don't understand, like, especially in this big corporations, you have, you need to make your employees happy. If you can take their worries and burdens off their shoulder by like helping them, I mean, if somebody's kid is sick, it's sick, they have to find a way to work around it, you know? And it's so funny how <laughs> a while ago, well, 
over here in Europe anyways, it was like, no, there is no way you cannot have a home office. You cannot work from home. And all of a sudden, everybody wants you to work from home. Exactly. All of a sudden, it's possible. Yeah, and I remember uh, we had talked about this briefly. I actually had studied abroad and lived in Czech Republic for a short time. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> and you're right, you know, um, it it's a different life, but it's a busy life no matter what country you're in. I think the biggest thing that made me feel like the world is a lot smaller was when I was walking in the grocery store one day. I was in Olomouc, which is one of the cities on the east side, and mm -hmm. so I was walking in uh, the local grocery store, and I saw this kid have a temper tantrum, and I know that sounds like the dumbest thing, but how many cultures, you know, you don't think about, you know, somebody from, you know, Asia, somebody from Africa, somebody from South America or Europe, and there's a kid having a temper tantrum, and you're just sitting there thinking, they have that at home. I get that. You know, I relate yeah. to that as a person that, you know, this kid is just having a bad day. And yeah, that's totally. the thing about it, even though there was a language barrier. But the point is, you know, if more people, I think we're in a unique situation with COVID, we're being forced to see other cultures and accept other people in a way that we've never had before as well. Yeah. That is very true, but um, I, I think we can only be successful and, and only thrive if we adapt to the new situations that are thrown at us because we can change it, then we have to get with it. And that means making most out of it, you know? And this is for me, it was in the beginning very hard. I had like a couple of days where I thought, okay, you know what, if that's what life's gonna be, then fuck this, I'm not, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know? So I really struggled with it. And then at some point I said, okay, you know what? That's not me because I'm always the I'm always that kind of person. It's like, when there's a problem, it's like, okay, what's the solution? You know, I don't right. like to kind of like hang in there and just like be like, oh my God, this is shit. And, uh. But obviously the pandemic is something completely out of the norm. So, you know, but you have to yeah. make most of it. Yeah. Right, exactly. And that's what we have new situations like new types of depression where we don't get to socialize like we used to. Um, and th don't get me wrong, there's so many people that are dying and I'm in no way making light of this situation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think we've really all had to look culturally, globally at, hey, you know, this is a real deal. This isn't just affecting my local area, my country. This is, mm -hmm. you know, global scale. We really need to look forward into what's best for everybody. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me ask you real quick, though, yeah. before um, you have a son who has autism. Mm -hmm. How does he get with this COVID situation? Is there even like, does he even get to feel it? So I mean, obviously he does, there's, but. there's good things and bad things about it. So the good mm -hmm. things about it is, you know, normal things people wouldn't even think about, like lights, for example, or yeah sunny days, um, sounds like the bells ring in between classes and stuff like that. Those things can trigger my son. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, throw him into these wild, crazy tantrums where he's mm -hmm. gonna like punch people or something, but it definitely affects his day. So yeah. being at home, those kind of things have been, you know, a good improvement. But the downside is he has so much freedom uh, with school that he just doesn't feel like he has to commit to class because he doesn't okay. really... It's like, you know, when you watch YouTube, you're just kind of sitting there unwinding from the day kind of thing mm -hmm. um, or watching TV. And so I think he kind of feels the same way with his schoolwork instead of knowing, oh, I have to get my English done today or I have to get my math done today. Um, yeah, he just, he doesn't think he has to turn anything in. <laughs> and so it's like, oh. it's a day to day. That's why the Alexas are actually going off. They are oh. set to help him stay on task on what class he's supposed to be in okay okay oh this is great this is actually yeah see <laughs> so wow. it, it lets me know um, it lets him know when it's break time it lets him know when it's lunch time all of it it keeps him on task oh this is great idea was that your idea it was my idea um nice. basically i have two sons and they had two different schedules and so i had to go through and i had to figure out okay i work full time you know i work mm -hmm. from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time and mm -hmm. those are critical school times eight to three is their school so you know I have to take frequent breaks are you actually doing your work are you actually you know doing your you're turning in your science yeah. like you're supposed to and then Alexa you know helps me to kind of stay on task as well like oh I need to go and check and make sure this is really happening too wow amazing absolutely cool well I want to thank you for your time 
I want you to uh, I want you to tell us what your blog is again for everybody who's trying to start a business or already started and they just need some support. Absolutely. It's just add that.com. And in case you're wondering, you know, you don't know where to add, you don't know where to fit in, where to start. Just add that is your starting point because you are literally adding this to your life. You're adding this to your daily routine. Uh, so just add that.com. Hopefully that will stick with the, the listener. I appreciate it. Alexa, stop. Sorry. That was I appreciate, my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to let me be on your show. Thank you for taking the time and being on the show. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. You know what to do. We're going to have everything in the show notes, the, the, the blog, the, the book, um, her socials, how to get in touch. And you know what to do as well. Like subscribe, like comment, share, get on all the streaming platforms. Give us a listen and uh, see you next week. Bye, Thanks. guys. Oh, thank you. Oh, That's it. Pleasure. Uh, I hope I, I didn't ramble too much. So I thought it was a great feel like with the show. I really, yeah, it was it. great. It was great. No, you didn't ramble. You did very well. You did very, very well. I just broke my jacket for some reason. Oh, That's no. a different story. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I let you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stay in touch and um, send me an email with, your, with a picture, with all the stuff, you know, like your socials, your links, everything. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank to have you. Have a good one. All right. Bye. You too. Bye.